The Lord be with you. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this first Sunday of Advent. I'll have a few words to say about what Advent means in just a moment, but it's good to see all of you here in the sanctuary. It is good to greet those who are joining us on the live stream or who are watching this as a recorded service. I want to offer a special word of welcome to visitors and guests who we have with us either here or online. If you are a visitor, we welcome you in the name of Christ, and we pray that you will experience God's love for you here this morning. I'm going to ask folks here in the sanctuary to please take a moment and double check your cell phones, make sure that they are silenced for our service today. We begin a new season of the church year today, and in fact, it is a new church calendar year. Advent is the season of four Sundays of preparing our hearts and minds for the celebration of Christ's birth at Christmas. The world calls this the holiday season. And outside of church, that's great. And I encourage you to embrace that with lights and celebration and joy and parties and all of that. But Advent is a time to step out of that. And here in church, we step out of the pressure and the fast pace of our world's holiday season so that we can rest in the love and grace of God. Advent is a time to wait. It's a time for patience. And that's why we don't sing Christmas carols yet in Advent. We're waiting. Now, you all know, waiting and resting go very much against the grain of our culture today. Advent needs to be reinforced outside of these four Sunday mornings if it's really going to make an impact on our spiritual life. And so on these Sundays especially, I encourage you to mark this holy season of Advent as a special time of devotion, a special time of commitment, and to make use of the devotional guides that we are creating for Advent. They're available at rlcmilford.com slash connect every Sunday afternoon. They go through Monday through Saturday. They are a set of reflections on this Sunday's scripture readings. They are guides for prayer, and they are also a schedule of psalms for you to read and pray. We do have a couple of hard copies available out in the narthex with the tote bags, but these are a way to help keep you remain centered on the season of Advent on the expectation of the coming of Christ, despite all the world's distractions. So I hope that you will make use of them. We do continue to hold adult Bible study between worship services, and that will be in the fellowship hall starting at 945. We invite you to join us for fellowship, for sharing, for growing in faith, and you can also enjoy coffee fellowship and refreshments during that time as well. I want to say thank you to all of you for your generous financial support of Reformation's ministry. Your giving is enabling us to share the good news of Jesus with more and more people every week. If you're participating online, or if you prefer to give electronically, I encourage you to go to rlcmilford.com give, where you can give an offering through our website. Your investment in our congregation will help Reformation continue to thrive. And then finally, as we talk about giving, I'm delighted to announce that one of Reformation's beloved traditions has come back this Advent, and that is our mitten tree. The mitten tree is set up in the narthex, and it is Reformation's way of helping senior citizens who are in need in our community. So you can read all about that in the bulletin. Um, you can stop on your way out, grab a mitten off of the tree, and you will be helping to provide for a joyful Christmas for those who otherwise might not have anything to celebrate. So we thank you for that. And with those announcements, we invite you now to please stand as we begin worship with confession and forgiveness. We gather in the name of the God of hope and light, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, we long for your light 
to come into our darkness. Without your mercy, we cannot escape the grasp of fear and doubt and bitterness. Without your truth, we cannot walk in your ways of faith and hope and love. Come now, we pray, and set us free from sin and death, so that we may delight in your goodness and serve you in holiness. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But the baby who was born in Bethlehem is the Savior of the world and the King of Redemption, who will come again in glory. Let us confess our sins to him, so that we may know hope and joy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name, now and forever. Amen. God gave his Son, Jesus Christ, to die and rise again for the salvation of the world. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. And so, as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
for the very unliturgical microphone noises there. Okay, can you hear me through this mic? Okay, all right. It wasn't working before, but I think it's working now. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus, and renew our faith. We face so many fears. Open our eyes to see that your victory is certain and our redemption is surely coming so that the light of hope may banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the lighting of the Advent wreath. reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I shall cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is righteousness. The word of the Lord. A reading from First Thessalonians. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. The word of the Lord. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding, of what is coming upon the world, 
for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Dear sisters and brothers, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Anybody ever worry or stress about the future? Anyone? How about if I say things like Omicron, inflation? Yeah, I, I can see the anxiety spiking. And then Jesus comes along and says these cheerful words to us. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Thanks, Jesus. That's just what we needed today. But here's the thing. I don't think Jesus is trying to scare us straight here. On this first Sunday of Advent, Advent, when the world is stressing out about the holiday season and worries about everything under the sun are skyrocketing, I think we will find in these words from Luke that Jesus gives us reason for courage and peace and even joy whenever we face an uncertain future. Now, before we get to Jesus' words, first I want to talk for a minute about what the future is. See, we usually think about the future as something that's just going to happen to us. And on one level, that's certainly true. Nobody could have predicted COVID, or an earthquake, or a heart attack. You can't control whether or not you will run into a person one day who will be the love of your life. There are ways in which the future happens to us. But at the same time, the future is not simply something that occurs and is imposed on us. In many ways, our future is actually built out of the raw materials of our present. Or to say it another way, there is much about our tomorrows that we actually create using the building blocks of our todays. The choices we make in this moment can set the course for many moments still to come. Our sacrifices now open the door to possibilities down the road. The decisions that we make day in, day out, 
repeated, become habits that shape our character. And our character is what guides the direction that our lives will take. So for some very basic mundane examples, if we want financial freedom tomorrow, we probably need to save and invest today instead of seeking instant gratification now. If we want health and energy in the years to come, then we need to establish habits of fitness and discipline in the here and now. But if instead we choose a present life of self-indulgence, entertainment, and distraction, then there is a very real risk that we are setting a course for a future that is frustrating, unfulfilled, and so much less than what we were created for. Our choices and habits today set the course for how our life will look tomorrow. All right, let me stop. Now, all of that is very true. And it is, if I may say so, fairly solid advice. It's also, I think, very faithful to the biblical truth of what it is to be a human being created in the image of God. But this solid, theologically true advice can actually make things a lot worse for us when we look into the future. And maybe you felt the tension in the back of your neck as I was talking, because now not only do we have to worry about the things that are out of our control, we also have to stress over the things in our control. I mean, what if the choices I make today, or worse, the choices I've been making for decades, are only going to create a smaller future for me, a less healthy set of tomorrows. What if, and those are great words of anxiety right there, what if I've already made choices and created habits that lock me onto a course leading somewhere I don't want to go? All right, great job, Pastor. Way to just pile all those burdens right onto our backs. Fair enough. But there's still something very important that we haven't gotten to yet. It's true that our choices today can shape our reality tomorrow. Our present can change our future. But here's the advent twist to that. It is also true that your future can change your present. The tomorrow that is coming can actually shape the today that is already here. What do I mean? What if you knew the future? What if you knew how your story was going to end? And more than that, what if you knew that the end of your story was victory, salvation, joy, and life forever? Because that is exactly what Jesus promises you. See, Jesus doesn't talk about how he's going to come again to frighten us. He does it to encourage us, to empower us. See, what does he say we should do when everything seems to be falling apart? Does he say, run away, duck and cover, hide? No. Things, when things start to get scary, Jesus tells, up, tells us to stand up. Hold our heads high. Why? 
because that is precisely the moment that your redemption is drawing near. No matter how dangerous or uncertain it seems, the future does not hold your destruction. Because of Jesus, it holds your redemption. Our future does not end with gloom. Our future leads to victory. And so especially when things look like they are at their worst, Jesus tells you, be bold, be courageous. Your redemption is drawing near. See, Jesus has already defeated the worst that evil could ever do. He's already handled it all. On the cross, he conquered sin by the power of forgiveness. And he swallowed up death with the power of life. And he will come again to bring his reign of love and grace and life to all of creation. That means that evil and suffering and even death will come to an end forever. And so you can know that nothing we face will ever be stronger than the resurrection life and love of Jesus. And that victory, it is promised to you by Christ. It is yours. It may not be here yet, but it's coming. Things may look bad today, but your redemption is on its way. So what does this mean? In the middle of life's worst, when all the world is running scared, you can stand tall. Because you know how the story ends. Not with your defeat, but with the victory of Jesus. Not with your destruction, with your redemption. So, do not be afraid. Your future has been made secure by Jesus. And in that courage for the future, do not run from the hard choices today. Don't shy away from the sacrifices or the struggles because they are the road into the larger life of love and service and hope that Jesus is making for you. You don't have to choose fear or settle for selfishness. Jesus has created something greater and more glorious for each and every one of you. Now sure, it is always a safe bet that challenging times will come again. But Jesus is coming again too. So you can walk Encourage. You can sacrifice and serve and risk. Your future is secure in the love of Christ, and your todays can be filled with hope and peace and joy. Amen. Please stand.
let us confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge, to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray with confidence and hope for ourselves, the whole church, and all of creation. Almighty God, the world gives us so many reasons to worry. Help us to see that you have already won the victory over all evil, so that in all circumstances, we may make choices of courage, love, and hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, when the days seem dark, shine the light of your love on us. Lead us out of fear. Give us the joyful faith today to build lives of service, compassion, and integrity for the future. Teach us the ways of your peace and power. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Holy Spirit, let your hope grow strong in our hearts. Give us the discipline to set our spirits in line with your intentions and to sacrifice our own short-term ease today for the sake of your highest purposes in our tomorrows. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord of the Church, lift our hearts above the distractions of the world so that during this holy Advent season we may set our souls on you. Shape our hearts and our lives so that we may become a beacon of peace, courage, and hope for all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father of all, we pray for people everywhere facing the threats of violence and hunger. Protect all your children and provide for their needs. Defend those facing political oppression, especially in China. Make your church throughout the world an instrument of peace and of dignity for all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, bring an end to the global pandemic. We also pray for all who are sick, grieving, or in other special need, especially Pastor John Ranney, Ray Gannon, Renata McKenzie, Lee Clark, June Brightfeller, Linda Kakamas, Barbara Seth, Pat Sparks, David, Claire Vinette, Howard Evers, Rex Batchelor, Keith Wilson, Robbie, Todd French, Shane, Don Hanna, Kathy Hubbard, Claire Brooks, Tamara Hutchinson, Sharon Samat, Lester Tucker, Carol Peterson, Mark Nauman, Carol Powell, Susan Cooper, and Irene Reed, and all those 
Do we name now aloud or in the silence of our hearts? Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. If you're watching the live stream or the recorded service, and others are with you, please greet them with a sign of God's peace. For those of us here in the sanctuary, please stay in your pew to share the peace, but you may share it with those in your household and turn and wave to others in the sanctuary. who are joining us online. We are glad that you are worshiping with us today, and we look forward to seeing you again in person or online soon. At this point, we want to say goodbye to our online worshipers, and we bless you now to walk with courage in uncertain times, 
trusting in the future Christ is creating for you. Be at peace and serve the Lord wherever you are.